All right, let's talk about the law of conservation of energy. The law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed or transferred. So you take this block, it's at the top of the ramp, so it's got some potential energy at the top of the ramp. If you release this block, it slides down, shing, and it no longer has potential energy because it's at, no, it's at a zero height. All of the potential energy is transformed into kinetic energy. When the block slides down the ramp, its potential energy transforms into kinetic energy. Let's push this block back to the top. It has, it's at rest, so it's got no kinetic energy. It's got potential energy up here. This time we release the block and instead of letting it slide down, we allow it to drop straight down. All of this potential energy transforms into kinetic energy because it's moving. Let's assume that it's still moving right here at this instant before it hits the ground. Now the kinetic energy when the block slides down is the same whether it slides down or falls down from the edge. Because if it started with this amount of potential energy, it will transform all of that potential energy into kinetic, whether it slides down or falls down. So these two amounts of energy are the same. In many scenarios, the potential energy at the top, it equals the kinetic energy at the bottom. So let's look at this pendulum like a grandfather clock or a pendulum is whenever you have a mass or a weight that swings back and forth freely. So right here we're at the top of our path. We got potential energy because we're at a height and it's got no kinetic energy because um, let's assume that we're at rest here. We're at, right at the top of our path in this instant. We release this ball um, and it, it starts to swing and at this location the ball has some potential energy, though less than it had before, because it's at a lower height, and it's got some kinetic energy. So it's got PE plus KE. So we sort of have a new equation. Now when the ball swings to its lowest point on its path, to its lowest point on its path, now down here, it has maxed out its kinetic energy. It's swinging as fast it'll, as it will go. And all of its potential energy has now transformed into kinetic energy. So you can see that the amount of potential energy that you had at the top is the same as the amount of kinetic energy you had at the bottom. And this allows us to write a new equation. Physicists love new equations. This tells us that the potential energy at the top equals the kinetic energy at the bottom. And this could be helpful. For example, if you knew the potential energy at the top, like if it was 100 joules, then you would know that the kinetic energy at the bottom is also 100 joules. So also keep in mind that it can never swing higher than its original position. So when we're, we started at this position, we swung across and the block, or sorry, the ball will have the same potential energy that it started with. It has no kinetic because it comes to rest when it reaches its high point before coming back down. Um, and it can never reach a higher position than what it started with. It can never get higher. Why? Because the law of conservation tells us that energy cannot be created. Um, perfect. Shoom. The law of conservation of energy allows us to make predictions. So let's assume that it takes about 100 joules of work to bring this ice block to the top of this ramp. So it takes work, you exert a force over a distance, we'll get this block to the top of the ramp, and we're gonna release this block, or before we release this block, let's write how much um, potential energy it has at the top. So it took 100 joules of work, so its potential energy equals 100 joules. It's at rest, so its kinetic energy is zero joules, and when we release this 
block, it slides down this frictionless ramp. And can you predict how much kinetic energy it has at the bottom? So when the block slides to the bottom, the block has zero joules of potential energy because it's at no height and 100 joules of kinetic energy. All of its potential energy got trans transformed into kinetic. So the potential energy equals zero joules and the kinetic energy equals 100 joules at this location because now we're moving really fast. We have velocity. So let's recall that Total mechanical energy, your TME, your total mechanical energy, that's all the types of energies that you have that are the mechanical types. So that would be your gravitational potential. In this video, we're just calling it potential energy and your kinetic energy. So your total mechanical energy is just adding up all of your um, mechanical energies. That's your total. So note that the law of conservation of energy tells us that in this scenario, the potential energy plus the kinetic energy, it's always going to equal 100 joules in this scenario because it can't, because the energy is going to be conserved or the total mechanical energy is going to be conserved, which means it won't change. It'll stay at whatever it started with. So that means that you can make other sorts of predictions too. Let's bring this block up. Let's slide it down. And let's say it went about a quarter of the way down. When it slides one quarter of the way down, it's got 75 joules of potential energy. So this block at this location has 75 joules when it started to slide down, and that allows you to fill in the kinetic energy. You know that at this location, it must have 25 joules of kinetic energy. How do you know that? Because the potential energy plus the kinetic energy must equal the total mechanical energy. 75 plus 25 equals 100. It must have 25 joules of kinetic energy at this location right there when it's sliding down. Let's take one last scenario. The law of conservation of energy allows you to fill in unknown values. So just like we did before, let's have a, um, a different object. Let's say it's a, it's a roller coaster. Very importantly, this is a frictionless roller coaster. Whee! So these people are going to be going down this uh, big, big hill here. And let me just fill in some known values. So in a physics question, it might say, ah, at the top, the potential energy is 50 joules and it's at rest at this point and it uh, the, the roller coaster is going to head down and here it has it's at its bottom of the ramp here so this is height equals zero so it has no potential energy at this location at location C the potential energy is 25 joules and at location D, the potential energy is 10 joules. So do you, looking at this physics scenario, do you have everything you need to fill in the kinetic energy at each location? Do you have ever, could you do that? Looking at the scenario, the way it's written out, would you be able to fill in the unknown values of kinetic energy? And you totally could, you know that at the top, it's got no speed. The, the coaster has no speed, so it must have zero joules. And at the bottom, all of its potential energy is gone, and all that potential energy must have transformed into kinetic energy. And so it makes sense then that the, in this scenario, the potential energy plus the kinetic energy has to equal 50 joules and it can't change. The total mechanical energy is constant. It's conserved. So 25 joules, 40 joules. Cool. So remember that if there is no friction, if there is no friction or air resistance in a scenario, assume that mechanical energy will stay constant. So if there is friction though, so imagine a scenario where if you have friction, so with friction, you should know 
that the mechanical energy, it's going to transform, transform into things like something like thermal energy. That friction will cause heat and that mechanical energy will not be conserved. But in any, all these scenarios where there is no friction, the total mechanical energy does 